Welcome back everyone to the Westlake Hornets Team Builder Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. As today the Hornets set on to take the Arizona State Sun Devils. Westlake is 9-1 on the year coming off a nice win just a week ago. And today they're going to be taking on Arizona State. Last week their win was against Arizona so they're hoping to beat another team from Arizona. As the Sun Devils, 6-4 of the year, led by the senior quarterback Jack Jackson. 2,561 passing yards, 23 passing touchdowns. He's had quite the year. And just last night, he was the 20th pick in the OFL draft by the Chicago Bears, but then was traded to the Indianapolis Colts. He is a senior, and we'll get to see him one last time against the Hornets. His brother, Owen Jackson, is a linebacker for Westlake, so there is a brotherly connection as Westlake, number three in the country, trying to hold down that ranking. If USC wins their next in-conference game, that means the Hornets will be unable to participate in the Pac-12 championship, and they will have to hope for either a loss from number one, Texas, or number two, Ohio. Not Ohio State, Ohio. Welcome to Sun Devil Stadium. Number three, Westlake taking on Arizona State. Hornets set at nine and one. Sun Devils sit at six and four. There's number 16, Jack Jackson. Representing the Sun Devils, his team will get the ball first. Westlake's defense has been dominant as of late. We'll see if they can do it against Owen Jackson's older brother, Jack Jackson, is on second and one. Jackson keeps it on the option, and he gets clobbered by his younger brother, Owen Jackson. Or Owen Hitstick Jackson, I should say, making the play. This year, Owen Jackson played one of his other brothers, AJ Jackson. And Westlake ended up getting the win. Let's see if they can do it against Jack as on third and two. Jackson has a wide open man. That's Lott. And that'll be 27 yards for Tim Lott before being hit hard by Leon Moore. Arizona State is one for one on third down. Let's see if they can get another one. Or if Westlake can get a stop. 549 left here in the first. Tight end in motion. He will go to the left side. Jack Jackson looking to throw it. Jack looking for the end zone. And he's going to be intercepted. That's Jeremy Harrington, who had a pick last week, his third of the season, and he's only played like four or five games due to an injury. As Jackson, he's been known for not throwing a lot of picks in his career, but it seems like he does throw a lot against Westlake. Definitely not an ideal play from the newest starting quarterback of the OFL, Indianapolis Colts. Fishing in motion, Curtis is going to hand it off for the Heisman favorite, Alex Ellis, who loses a yard on first down. Ellis has been incredible the past three weeks. There are his incredible numbers on the season. He has 91 career rushing touchdowns, which is the most in college football history. Fourth down and one. Westlake will keep their offense on the field. They are going to risk it for the biscuit. Interesting call. Handoff for Alex Ellis, and he does convert, gaining eight on the halfback dive. This is the 14th play of the drive, if you technically count it part of the drive. 51 yards for Matt Fellows. Don't not quite know if it does fit his distance as it's up, and he does drill it. It barely went in, and the Westlake Hornets will take a 3-0 lead as the Penn State Nittany Lions defeat the number 19 Indiana Hoosiers 20-17 as Tim White with two touchdown passes, and Penn State, who won the national championship last year over Westlake, is 4-7. What a drop-off from a great season last year. Throwing an interception definitely is not ideal for Jack Jackson and the Sun Devils. Second and 10, under two minutes left to go here in the first. Three nothing is your score. Here's Jack Jackson looking to throw it. Jackson under pressure, he's gonna be sacked by the junior, Isaac Solomon. And that'll bring up a third down and 13. Westlake ended up with another subpar drive. So here's Matt Fellows from 48. He already had a field goal from 51 yards today, so this should be a no-brainer. And indeed, it is good, once again, barely having the distance. Matt Fellows not known for his power, and those are two of probably his five longest kicks of his career. And he does it in one quarter of action. Three for seven, 39 yards and an interception. Definitely not ideal for Jack Jackson, but he's playing better on this drive as he is two for two at the moment. 6.43 left to go until halftime. Westlake leads it 6 to nothing. As on first down, Jackson keeps it himself. And Brock Rivero reads the play like a book. Rivero knew that play. 
since the beginning, and the option definitely failed. It is third down and 12 for the Sun Devils. Can they convert? Will the Hornets get yet another stop? This would be the third failed drive for the Sun Devils today if they don't convert. As Jackson, plenty of time, finds Lott, and Tim Lott with the first down. He will gain 24, and the chains will move. Jack Jackson is really picking it up this drive. He's 3 for 3 with 34 yards so far. As the Sun Devils are driving, first down. Jackson on the option, and Isaac Solomon, among other defenders, there to make the play. Looks like they will get the tackle for loss to Solomon, and now it's 2nd and 12. 4th down and 10, here's the field goal unit out to make this a 3-point game, as Westlake has never gotten a shutout in team history, and that will stand as the kick is good, and the Sun Devils will cut the lead in half. Your score is now 6-3. to three. Alex Ellis has been the most dominant player in the country the past 3 weeks, and today he only has 7 carries for 24 yards, so credit to Arizona State for really playing well on him. Second down and eight. Curtis. Risky throw, but an incredible grab by Mr. Reliable. It's the senior, Michael Wilson, who's going to come down with it. We got to look at that one again. Risky throw, but an incredible catch by Wilson. It is now first down from the 47. Ellis and Curtis in the backfield, as once again, it'll be another pass. Curtis scrambling with it. Curtis, he's going to take a shot deep down the field for Nigel Wiggins. The redshirt freshman, 53 yards for a Westlake touchdown. The redshirt freshman connection. What a dart from Peyton Curtis. He was patient. He found the open man. And a very nice route from Nigel Wiggins getting by both of the defensive backs. And Wiggins is able to get the touchdown. Jack is 6-for-6 six six so far in the second quarter. He has really picked up his play after a pretty awful first quarter. Second and 10, three and change left to go until halftime as Jack Jackson keeps it. And there's Owen, hit stick Jackson as Owen with his second tackle for a loss, clobbering his older brother to the ground. I can imagine those two are used to tackling each other on the backyard back in their young days. And now they're doing it in front of thousands of fans as on second and 11, P.J. West loses to Emmanuel Charles, the senior, with a nasty hit, putting him on his back. Now it's third down and 14 here for the Sun Devils. Can they convert, or will Westlake get a stop? Here's Jack Jackson looking to throw it. Jackson looking deep downfield, and it's intercepted. Emmanuel Charles, the senior, makes the play. Charles still on his feet, and he's going to be wrapped up by Jack Jackson at around the 45. Westlake's second interception here in the first half. Emmanuel Charles now has six interceptions on the year, one of the highest marks in the NCAA. 2.09 left to go here, as on first down, Alex Ellis gets the handoff on the toss. Ellis has blocks. Ellis down the field will gain 21. He practically had 21 yards for the whole game, 24 to be exact. Nice play right there from the Heisman favorite. Westlake is in the red zone for the first time today, believe it or not. 121 left to go in the half. First and goal. Curtis looking, finds Everett Lemieux. Curls get the girls as Lemieux with the seven yard score. And Westlake will take a 17 point lead with 117 left in the half. Arizona needs a big drive from Jack Jackson or else this game could get ugly. 30 seconds left here in the half. Arizona has to put points on the board this drive, even if it is just a field goal. As Jackson over to Tim Lott. But it's dropped in the end zone. That would have been an easy seven point. Nice pass from Jack, but Lott just blatantly drops it. And then on third down and nine, Ogobo and Necho will get the sack, likely forcing an Arizona State field goal. Arizona State did kick a field goal, so it's now 20 to six. It is now third down and six. For Westlake is Peyton Curtis looking to throw it. Curtis over to Alex Ellis. Ellis on the screen. There is no one in front of him to block. He's going to lose a yard, forcing a Westlake punt. Arizona State's defense got a stop. Now it's time for their offense to take advantage. Five and a half minutes left in the half, or in the quarter, sorry, as Jack Jackson fumbles the football. Wesley McNamara will pick it up, and McNamara untouched like weekend homework for a Westlake touchdown. I think that'll be Isaac Solomon credited with the fours. Owen Jackson was also in the mix. 
as I think that was actually a Gobo and Necho who forced it, not Solomon. And it is now a three possession game. So the booth is going to review it. And it looks like the ball was clean stripped out. No, his butt was down. And then the ball came out. So the play is going to be reversed. Still a nice play from a Gobo and Echo, but no fumble force and no touchdown. Arizona State is so lucky that they are able to keep the ball and keep this game within two possessions. First down, four and a half minutes left in the quarter. Here's Jackson under pressure from his brother Owen, but he's going to find Antoine Hobbs. No safeties were deep, and Antoine Hobbs is able to gain 30 on the short pass. The Sun Devils are now in the red zone, second and five. Handoff for Hobbs, and he loses a yard. That's QJ Casimir with the play, and Hobbs is down. That could be a serious injury for Arizona State as he has been really good today. Losing Antoine Hobbs could be devastating for his Sun Devil offense. The new running back is number 48, Jason Jordan. As Jack Jackson keeps it himself. And Jack Jackson will take it in for an Arizona State touchdown. And with 3.06 to go, this is just a one possession game. The Sun Devils have a chance. Arizona State running back Antoine Hobbs has a bruised shoulder and he will return to this game, which is huge for the Sun Devils. Second and 11, here's Everett Lemieux on the, the curl pass, and Lemieux will gain 25. The curls get the girls, as Lemieux, who's been pretty quiet the past few weeks, four catches for 59 yards, and a score not too shabby for the junior. Westlake's first three games of the season were won within seven points, then they lost to USC, and ever since then, they've been on a six-game winning streak in which they've won each game by multiple possessions. Second down, here's Alex Ellis. He loses three yards on the run. That's going to be Zach Weeks with his third tackle for a loss of the day. Westlake decided to punt it, so Arizona State has a chance to tie up this game. Second and two, Jack Jackson will keep it himself. Oh, my word. Owen hits Dick Jackson. Lays him out. That's not a brotherly hit. That's a manly hit. We are now in the fourth quarter, and Arizona State has a chance to tie up this game on this possession. Third and four, screen pass for Jordan. Jordan trying to get by Owen Jackson, and he does. There goes Jason Jordan down the sidelines, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the six by Jeremy Harrington. What a play for Arizona State. Holy cow, ladies and gentlemen. The Sun Devils can tie up this game. Will they do it? Jackson looking to throw it. He's going to be sacked. That's a Gobo and Echo with the play. And Necho has been very good today. Three tackles for loss, including two sacks. Fourth and goal at the three. And the Sun Devils are going to risk it for the biscuit. They're going to go for it and try to tie up this game. Falk in motion. It's going to be a handoff for Antoine Hobbs. Touchdown, Sun Devils. And with 534 to go, this game is tied up. And Arizona State has a chance to get the upset. Arizona State did make the extra point, so we are now tied up. As the 9-1 Rutgers Scarlet Knights, how they are that good, I have no clue, are currently losing to the 6-4 UCF Knights, 20-17 in Central Florida. With four and a half minutes to go, I don't think anyone expected this game to be tied up. Westlake has not scored yet here in the second half. A major credit to the Sun Devil defense. Third down and four. Curtis looking to throw it. Risky pass for Wilson who drops it. And that will force a Westlake punt. And Arizona State has a chance to take the lead. Ever since the fumble was reversed, this Arizona State squad has been rejuvenated. And they are now in the red zone. And they have a chance to take the lead. Scott is in motion. He'll enter the backfield. Jackson on the option. Big play for Agobo and Echo. This defense needs some momentum as... It has been an awful second half for them, except for pretty much Inecho, as he does make the play right there, his fourth tackle for the Inecho and Owen Jackson have been combined for seven TFLs today, which is incredible, as Arizona State gets it to the one. Glenn Scott with the play. Two minutes left to go. Sun Devils have it here at the one-yard line. Can they do it? No Jackson or Inecho in the game for West Lake, as there's Jordan... And the Sun Devils, with 1.58 to go, will take a 7-point lead. It's Jason Jordan who takes it in. And the Sun Devils are on a 21 to nothing, actually 24 to nothing run.
if Westlake does not score a touchdown on this drive, it's pretty much game over, and the Hornets won't have a chance to compete for the national championship. Ellis, he loses three yards. What a play for the Sun Devils. And Coach Mason Conway will have to call a timeout. 21 seconds left. It's third and 10. Westlake needs to get a first down within two plays or else it's over. As Curtis will look to get it to Ellis on the screen. And he loses five. Westlake calls a timeout. And this fourth and 15 is the game. Fourth down and 15. This is it. If the Hornets don't get it, then they cannot be national champions this season. As Curtis looking to throw it. Curtis looking deep for Everett. Would be when it's incomplete. And the Sun Devils will complete the upset. They were down 20 to 6 at halftime, scored three touchdowns, and stopped the Hornets offense to zero points. And they will upset the number three ranked Hornets. Pretty much ending their pursuit at a national championship. Jack Jackson was able to take one last knee, and the Sun Devils have done it. They have upset West Lake, and the Hornets, bearing a miracle, will not be national champions this season, as this West Lake team has been incredible lately in the second half. They got outscored 21 to nothing, and you don't always win them all, and the Hornets. Doesn't look like they're going to win the Natty this season, but they still have a lot to play for. They likely have one last regular season game. They're not going to make the Pac-12 championship, but they do have a bowl game. Potentially the Rose Bowl is a possibility, and the Hornets are still playing for something, even if it's not a ring this season.